up to 10 pounds or 4.5 kilograms. That's how much weight a Formula One driver can lose over the course of a single race. According to Lewis Hamilton in an interview with Graham Bessinger in 2016 on how he reliably loses 10 pounds every time he races in Malaysia, he likened it to just like working out in a sauna for an hour and a half. So why do F1 drivers lose so much weight in a single race? For starters, it's water weight. Yes, F1 drivers literally sweat about four and a half kilos worth of water during the race due to the extreme heat in cockpits and the intense conditions they're put through. Of course, ambient temperatures and humidity levels vary according to where in the world they're racing. We're looking at you, Malaysia and Singapore. But regardless, even in chilly European climate, they're losing about 6.5 pounds or 3 kilograms at least per race. And no, the world's most technologically advanced and expensive cars do not come with air conditioning, nor is the cool air from the window when flying at 300 kilometers per hour necessarily enough to cool them down. Some people think that if if you sweat a lot, then you've done a great workout, but that's not accurate if you live in a cooler climate or are swimming for example. Sweating is more indicative of the intensity of the workout due to the body needing to cool itself down, which is exactly what happens to an F1 driver in a race. So, is it just heat and sweat then, or is there more to it? You may notice that right after the race, all the drivers are brought into a room to be weighed while they're still wearing their full protective gear, including their helmet. This is done to adhere to the minimum weight regulations as determined by Formula 1's governing body, the FIA. Remember, teams want their cars to be as light as possible because it makes a massive difference in terms of speed. An extra kilo of love handles on the driver can cost them up to two seconds in the race distance. According to Article 4 of the FIA's 2021 Formula 1 technical regulations, this year the car along with the driver must weigh at least 752 kilograms. This is an increase of more than 6 kilograms from last year. What many of you might not know, however, is that 80 kilograms of this must come from the drivers themselves. Now, if your mind immediately shot to Yuki Tsunoda weighing in at a tender 54 kilos, then rest assured that drivers who weigh less can compensate for the difference with the ballast in their seat. Drivers losing that much weight during the race could prove to be potentially problematic because it might cause them to be disqualified or get a penalty if they fall under the minimum weight limit. This is why sometimes teams will instruct drivers to pick up some more rubber during the runoff lap. Pay close attention next time whether or not drivers intentionally drive over the dirtiest parts of the track so that their hot tyres pick up scraps of dirt and rubber, otherwise affectionately referred to as marbles, to increase the total weight of the car just to make sure that they're safe when time comes for the final weigh-in at Park Firm. Ok, so minimum weight regulations aside, is losing that much weight in sweat normal or even safe? Water constitutes about 70% of the body weight in a normal adult, and sweating is the primary means for our body to regulate temperature. The temperature of the race car cockpits in Asia can reach 60 degrees Celsius, which is only slightly cooler than your average sauna. Drivers bundled up in the fireproof suits while racing for almost two hours probably spend just about as much energy trying not to pass out because losing more than 10% of body weight from water loss is clinically diagnosed as severe dehydration. It is life-threatening and would fire up in an entire emergency room. No pun intended. This is why you'll often see drivers wearing cooling vests, pouches filled with ice packs, and cooling collars to help lower the temperature of their torsos ahead of sessions or two. It does not do much besides offer some temporary relief for drivers and make them feel a bit more comfortable. The best remedy is dipping in an ice bar for about 5-20 to 20 minutes, and teams usually have this ready with them to aid the driver in his recovery. Drivers are also made to drink large amounts of water before the race, whether or not they're thirsty, to avoid potential complications of dehydration through sweating. There are instances in which these complications do happen, however. All this while we've talked about drivers who are concerned that the car will not meet the minimum weight requirement. But what about drivers who are concerned that they will exceed it? During the 2014 Malaysian Grand Prix, there were rumours of an F1 driver who passed out in an attempt to deliberately dehydrate to keep the car within the then legal weight limit of 692 kilos. Even Jensen Button, 2009 world champion, has admitted to toying with dehydration strategies. Another famous example of this is Nelson Piquet, who was so exhausted after winning the 1982 Brazilian Grand Prix that he struggled to get himself to the podium and collapsed when he reached it. Drivers never underestimate the physical strain that pulling five to six times their body weight due to the effect of G-force has on them, and quite frankly, neither should we. 
For any F1 rookies watching, the g-force is a physical force, the same as one unit of gravity, that is multiplied when there are quick changes in directional velocity. Everyday experiences like coughing, sneezing, or even going on a roller coaster allows us to experience higher g-forces. But every time an F1 driver corners, accelerates and brakes, they experience 4 to 6G, 2G and 5G respectively. In other words, don't mess with the G. In addition to risking their lives against potential crashes and fiery outcomes, drivers put their bodies through an immense physiological strain that most human beings simply cannot survive. Why? Because they just love racing that much. If you ever wonder why there are only 20 spots for drivers in the world's most popular motorsport, it's because not just anyone can do what an F1 driver does. But how will this all change come 2022, when the new minimum weight limit is increased again by a whopping 14 kilograms to a total of 790 kilograms? Will we be seeing bulkier drivers, or will they stay as lean as ever? Some certainly welcome the change, but we'll have to wait and see. If you enjoyed this video, do remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the Pitstop channel, and comment below to let us know what videos you'd like to see from us next.